My next guest is a man who has devoted 50 years of his life to improving the lives of underprivileged children in his hometown of Prince George's County, Maryland. Uh, but before we meet this man, let's take a look at the impact he's had on generations of children. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Emmerich. At the age of 76, Joe Emmerich is transforming his community. For over 50 years, he's been tending to the lives of at-risk youth with the Chillum Youth Project. I will learn to help myself and others. I will learn to help myself and others. Chillum Youth Project is a unique program for children who are very much at risk. Maxie. Nice. There are kids who don't do well in school. There are kids who never leave their neighborhoods. That's how big you are. The idea is to give them tools so that they can be whatever they want to become in life. He would always come every day to make sure I had uh, snacks, food, something for me to eat. Mr. Jones doesn't give up on me. We have had about 3,000 kids. Many of them went on to college. He became not only a teacher, but the father figure we all needed. The Youth Project shows kids a whole new world, encouraging them academically and socially so that one day they can become someone else's role model. With the mobile classroom bus, we connect the children with working professionals. <laughs> the whole point is to teach the children that this is what I can be. He's an incredible man, giving me a piece of his heart to everyone. For Joe, the mission to change the world is only achievable if everyone does their part. I hope that I'm inspiring people to get involved in their local communities. People should. That's going to be the measure of our future. Still on the project! Hey, folks, please welcome the founder of the Chillum Youth Project, uh, Mr. Joe Emmerich. Mr. Emmerich, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Pleasure, sir. Listen, what, what would you say is the most rewarding part of what you do? The most rewarding part is seeing the end result of hard work with kids who are as much as given up on in life. I think I've seen that thousands of times. And it's just a wonderful feeling to be able to do that because you know these children have capabilities, but they're hidden. And so we work in every way we can to bring out the good side of them so that they can stand on their own two feet and be good citizens, productive people. Mr. Simmerick, you, you work with thousands of children uh, who've fallen through the cracks in the system. I, how have you managed to get through to them when so many others have failed at it? What is it? Well, first of all, you have to believe that that child has potential. As a, a young teacher, I used to throw things at kids, not, not ballistics, but <laughs> I used to throw work to children and say, you gotta learn this, you gotta learn that, and you gotta learn the other thing. But then I learned that every child is like a building. They have a blueprint. And if you can get to understand what that child is made of, what, what their blueprint is, then you try to build on that. And that's been a really great thing. When I started <clears throat> talking to people about curriculum and throwing things at, at kids, this old friend of mine at Johns Hopkins, he was a, a doctor and he helped us a lot with kids' medical problems. But finally he said, couldn't you just teach them to be good people? All else is gonna come about. Yeah, let me, let me ask you the cause of I was talking to the producers and they said you had an epiphany when you witnessed a murder back in the 60s. Tell, tell me about that. Well, I did. I was riding with an, an old, older police officer and unfortunately, this young man shot and killed him. Shot and killed two police officers, in fact. And I was asked to go back to the cell where he was being held to identify him. So I'm totally horrified by this, as anyone would be. And I said, why did you do it? He said, so what? what? What am I? I'm nothing. 
I've never been anything. It's hard for you to get a person that has value of others' lives when they don't have value of their own. But this is the whole thing, and it's, it so shocked me to see this young man project that he didn't have any self-worth in, in his perception of himself. That I said, look, you know, I've, I've got to start doing something about this. And you've got to start a little. You yeah. can't just wait until people are teenagers or whatever. It's, it's got to be a long time. Right. You're right. exactly right. What do you think is the biggest day-to-day -day challenge that you face when you're trying to keep this program going? Well, the, <clears throat> the biggest day-to-day -day challenge is being able to deal with the money because we have a set budget and we have to constantly juggle what we do depending upon the money. When you have to always be wondering if you're going to have the money, it's, it's very difficult to, yeah. to run it. So. Well, I'll tell you what. We are, it's, it's clear to me and everybody watching that you, you just really just a one-in-a-million type of man. I mean, you just don't have <laughs> good guys like you walking around everywhere, sir. So uh, we reached out to our friends at Swag Bucks, the web's leading free gift card site, uh, where you get paid just for sharing your opinion. Now, they love all the work that you're doing, and they want to help you out. So Swag Bucks is donating $5,000 to your foundation. Right. There you go, Joe. And I tell you what, thank you so much for everything you do, sir. Hey, you want to learn more about the Chillum Youth Project and how you can help, head over to stevetv.com. We'll be right back. Great job, man. Great job. Hey, you made it to the end of this video. I got a lot more that you're gonna enjoy, so just click to watch the next one. And make sure you subscribe to always know what's happening.